Okay, so we've just installed your Tesla Powerwall. Yorick, I reckon the Tesla Powerwall, I'm not just saying this, is one of the best batteries on the market by far. Oh, I agree. I think it's one of the best in a blackout. In the, in the blackout, I think it is the best for sure. And we're going to give you a little bit of blackout training so you can be prepared. So we're going to explain to you in this video what Stormwatch is, the really impressive feature of the Tesla Powerwall. Mm -hmm. We're also going to talk about battery reserve settings, just in case you know there's a blackout coming in your local area and you can just top your battery up. Uh, we're going to give you some Armageddon training so that you can get ready for the next time a tropical cyclone goes near Brisbane and everyone ends up losing power. Yeah, uh, so my partner's at home right now and she's doing some Armageddon training right now. She is, yes. And lastly, we're going to take you through how to charge your battery from the grid for free every day. Is that for real? It is for real, Mark. Okay, let's get into it. Let's get into it. Okay, Yorick, so I've just pulled up my app. Um, one thing I really love about Tesla 2, by the way, is the app integration. And this is my car charging at work at the moment. I can scroll down here and we've got a Tesla Powerwall at the office and we've got the Congo Bongo. That's my house. Look, I've asked my partner to turn off the main switch and basically that's taken the house off grid. So an easy way to learn where the limits of your battery system is, is to simulate an off-grid situation while you still have access to the grid. Right now, we've got about 8.7 hours of battery remaining. Um, look, I've asked her to turn on a few high-powered items on. So we've got the oven on, we've got some pots on boil, and she's doing some washing all at the same time. But I've got up to 10 kilowatts I can draw, so I'm well within my, my limits. Now, one of the great features of the Tesla system, and we mentioned this before, is a feature called Stormwatch. So when we had the cyclone, and this is the first time I saw it get activated, if there is a severe weather warning for your area, Tesla gets a notification through your local you know, weather forecast data, and it'll actually trigger your battery to charge up from the grid um, in preparation of you losing power for you know what might be a short period or an extended period of time. So did that happen? We're in southeast Queensland, right? And so we had that extra cool cyclone pass. Did that happen for you? When that happened? It did, yeah. So I got a notification on my phone. So Tesla does push notifications and it said, you know, Stormwatch activated, your battery's charging in the event for, in preparation for a blackout. Yeah, okay. So that's all good with weather data. But what if there's, you, you get a letterbox drop from Energex saying that they're going to turn the power out on the weekend? Stormwatch is not going to help you there. No. So that's a really good question, mm -hmm. Mark. So Tesla have just recently introduced a feature or a setting called maximum backup. And so you can click on that and it'll essentially force charge your battery to 100%. And it will sit there at 100% in preparation for that grid outage. Or maybe that's a bit too extreme. You know, maybe you don't need that full 100%. Mm. So what we can do is we can actually go into your backup reserve settings and Tesla make it really easy. You know, we could just simply slide up and down how much of the battery I want. So let's say right now it's sitting at 20%, which is what I normally have it at. And that's what Tesla recommends. But if I was worried about a blackout, say, tonight or I was going to lose power because of a planned grid outage, I might set 70% of my battery to be ready for a blackout and it will only discharge the battery to that 70% uh, until that blackout happens. Now, another little feature, we can't show this in the app at the moment because you, your partner has already flicked the main switch, but a little party trick that you do, because because I've got your house on my app, every now and then on a Saturday night, I'll get a push notification that the Congo Bongo has gone offline. What are you doing there, Yoz? Yeah, so sometimes when I've got friends around, I like to show off my, my battery system. It's one of the noises of doing this, but uh, yeah, I could take my house off grid very easily just by a push of a button. With the Tesla, I don't actually have to turn off the main switch. If I want to simulate a blackout, I can literally just do it through the app, which I think is a great feature. But yeah. fortunately, Mark can't do it remotely, so you have to pair the phone to it. So there are multiple security uh, security features here as well, so you're not caught out. Yeah, okay. Now that Armageddon training that we're talking about, so you can do it both ways, Flick it off. I would say go to your main switch, right? Flick yeah, it off. flick it off because that's the most extreme way. Like that's there's no power. The Tesla can't automatically kick back in if it needs to. And it will essentially simulate a blackout. Yeah. Now with the Tesla Powerwall, you're kind of a little bit fortunate in this case because it's got such a fast discharge. Other batteries don't have 10 kilowatts available. Not everyone, no. But you could, let's say, turn it off on a Saturday morning and see how long it's going to last you with, you know, give, give us an example of how you would do Armageddon training. So what I would do is I'd turn off the main switch and then I would 
really test the battery and see how far I can push it before it trips. So uh, I've got two power walls, so I turn one off um, and there's a little switch on the side of the battery. And then what I did is I turned on uh, the oven, I've turned on the induction cooktop, I had the air cons going, I had a space heater running, and then it was getting close to its limits. And then I put on a kettle um, and that was enough to trip it. And what we found with the Teslas is you first start to see the lights dim, it's really working hard to keep it going, and then it trips. Now, the great thing is it automatically resets. So if you do get to the point where you trip your battery, turn off those high-powered items, and before you know it, the power will be back on and happy days. Yeah, you're probably pushing a little bit hard to trip it. Another way I guess you could do it is if you've got a weekend free, just flick off your main switch and see how long you last. you last two days, you're going to last one day, you know, just live as normal, see, see how far you will get through on the battery. I think this is where Tesla has a really great feature as well. It actually tells you how many hours you've got mm. remaining and it'll come up as a pop-up as well if you're getting close to running out. So Tesla really help you out when it comes to this Armageddon training. It is, yeah, for sure. Um, okay, now you, you teased us about charging your battery for free. How do you do that? So if you want to charge a battery for free, there's a thing called time-based control. And this is uh, a feature I use myself. So um, look, you can either be on self-powered mode where the batteries will just charge and discharge to keep what's going to and from the grid zero. That's sort of your standard, you know, solar battery setup. But time-based control, I can tell the battery what prices I'm paying at what times. And the Tesla is very smart. It'll actually choose when's the best time to charge my battery, when's the best time to discharge the battery, and even hold on to that battery capacity, say, let's say when I'm in a, in a cheap period. So what I can do is I can just demonstrate this here. So right now, um, look, the blue period in between 11 and 2, that's my free period. And you can get this with companies like Ovo uh, Energy or uh, Glowbird on the Zero Hero plan. And what I do, and I recommend this to a lot of customers, is have your battery charge up from the grid automatically between 11 and 2, regardless of what the weather is. Lunchtime. Lunchtime. Yeah. Because there's so much solar in the grid, you might as well use other people's solar power to top up your battery if you don't have enough. If it's a rainy day, you've always got a fully charged battery by 2 o'clock and it'll get you through the night. And it's free. It's fantastic. And if you're worried about a blackout, well, it's a lot better if you've had a couple of rainy days to have a fully charged battery by the early afternoon for that maybe that afternoon storm when you're more likely to have that power trip. Yeah, yeah. It sounds too good to be true, but it really is just the way the electricity markets work is that there's so much solar on the grid at lunchtime that actually uh, prices go negative and, yep. and companies have to pay for sending that power back to the grid, right? Yeah, and make the most of it. You know, you might as well take advantage of your battery and make it work to your advantage. And you're also helping out the grid and getting free power. Yep. Win-win. So this is the these are the best tips we have for the Tesla Powerwall. Um, if you have any other tips, please leave some comments down below and uh, hit the like button. Okay, enjoy your Tesla. Enjoy your Tesla.